In this video I'm going to show you how I designed a couple of vents and grills for 3D printing for an upcoming modeling project. Here I'm using Tinkercad which is free and browser based so there's nothing to download and I'm starting with the most basic shape which is a cube. With all my measurements in millimeters I want this cube to have a length of 7, a width of 20.5 and a height of 2mm. This is going to be the basic outline of my vent shape. Then I'm going to take another cube which is going to act as the hole to create the gaps in the vent. This time I'm going to make it 0.5mm wide which will be the width of both the gaps and the bars between the gaps. I've made the length 6mm so that there'll be a 2mm frame around the outside and I've made it green so that it's easier to see. Then what I do is position that green piece roughly where I want it to be, so 2mm away from the left edge, and in fact you can see there I change the length to 8mm from 6mm. Then I move this green shape down on the z-axis so that it goes all the way through the original red shape. When I'm happy that that green piece is in the right position, I can turn it into a hole, and then all I do is select both the original frame and the new piece and combine them. And that has the effect of cutting the green piece away from the red piece and giving us that nice ventilation hole. All I need to do now is to copy and paste that same hole piece over and over again, making sure that I space them out 0.5mm between each one. It doesn't take too long. And then once I've got all of those holes in place, select everything and combine. And that has the effect of cutting all of the holes from the original vent and giving us our final vent piece. A nice simple process, doesn't take too long and of course you could make those ventilation uh, slats go horizontally as well as vertically if you wanted. Let's add a small amount of detail here with a little recess to represent the screw holes. So to do that I'm going to start with a cylinder and we know that the frame is 2mm wide so I'm going to make this cylinder 0.6mm diameter. I'm also increasing the number of sides there to get a nice smooth circle. Next I move the cylinder over the location where the screw hole should be and then I need to recess it slightly, sink it in slightly into that ventilation frame but not like before, I don't want it to go all the way through because I don't want a hole all the way through. Instead I just sink it 0.25mm into the surface of the frame. The only reason I've made the cylinder so tall here is as a visual aid. I make it a hole, select the original frame and the cylinder, combine them, and there we go, we have a slightly recessed screw hole. And of course I follow the same process for each corner. And I get the final result of a simple grill with four screw holes. Next up I want to make a slightly more complicated shape. I want a circular vent, but I want the sides of the vent to be curved inwards rather than being uh, straight, rather than being perpendicular to the wall behind them, if you see what I mean. Again, it's really a case of choosing the right shapes and just carving away um, at those. So instead of starting with a cylinder, I start with a dome. One option would be to cut off the top of this dome, but instead I'm just going to squash it down so that it has a height of 2mm, which will be the final thickness of my vent. And if we change the view, you can see there it's got slightly inwards curving walls, of course. I give that dome a radius of 20mm, although I'll later add 0.5mm, and I make a cylinder with a radius of 17mm and match their centres. Then I make that new cylinder a hole, and I sink it through the middle of the dome. There you can see it goes all the way through. 
Then I combine the two shapes and it cuts away the center and leaves me that circle with those inward curving walls that I wanted. Now the process for creating the grid itself is very similar to the rectangular grill, except I'm going to be adding pieces here rather than cutting them away. And it's at this point that I added 0.5mm to the frame so that I don't get a fence post error that I'm not, I'm not out by one. So I start with a cube. I make it 20 millimeters wide, two millimeters high, and 0.5 millimeters deep. Then I adjust the height to one millimeter, but you can see we've got this small problem here where the square edge of the bar is just sticking out from that rounded edge of the frame. There are a couple of ways to solve this, but the easiest I found was to knock a quarter of a mil off the top of that bar so it's slightly recessed inside the frame. And I think that looks better anyway. Of course, if I make the bar too long, it's still going to stick out the side, but I just need to make sure it's not too long. And there we go, that's my first bar in the centre. Next job, copy and paste it. Again, make sure it's 0.5 mil away. And keep doing that for the rest of the circle until I get to the top edge. Once I've done that, of course it will look something like this with all the bars protruding. So as we get closer to the top, we just need to make each bar a little bit shorter each time. And that's easy enough to do. We'll start with this one. Just drag that edge in a small amount. There we go. Finally, you've got a couple of options. You could place all the bars in the lower half manually, or you could simply copy the upper half bars, flip them 180 degrees, and paste them in the right place. And there we go, we have a circular vent. Once we've got that, we can export these from Tinkercad as an STL file, load them into our slicing software, and 3D print them. And here are the final results printed with my Creality Mage Pro resin printer. I think they look pretty good actually. I know I could probably scratch build a vent or I could use one probably from the spare parts box. But the advantage of this method is you can make them exactly as you want them. There we go guys, that was a quick Tinkercad tutorial on making some simple vents. Hopefully I've encouraged you to have a go. It is quite a straightforward program. You just need to think about how you can break your object down into smaller geometric shapes. There are some limits for Tinkercad, you can't move vertices and make your own sort of custom shapes by dragging or anything. But if you think about cutting things down, there's quite a few things that you can do. I would like to thank all of you for watching this video. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. I will see you soon in a future video, and until then, have fun modelling.